If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for joining this uh, Clubhouse Meet. I think this is our 15th uh, Clubhouse Meet. So we've been uh, discussing about various topics in the past. And uh, all the recordings for most of the sessions are available in my YouTube channel. You can go through. And today we have a special guest, uh, Leandro, uh, who is very uh, uh, veteran in the performance testing field. I think from past 20 years, you've been contributing uh, for various uh, technologies uh, and uh, speaking in a lot of conferences, etc. And recently, uh, as I mentioned in the last week, uh, Clubhouse, uh, he has released, uh, published a new book called uh, Hitchhiking Guide to Load Testing Projects. So last week itself, uh, on the first day itself, I grabbed the book and then I spent uh, around four to six hours going through all the concepts. Uh, I read from page one to page till the last page. So I was uh, uh, very intrigued and uh, uh, whatever things we have uh, we have been experienced and whatever things you will face in our day-to-day -day life projects, everything he has covered in an orderly fashion. So today, uh, Leandro agreed to talk to us. And uh, if you have any questions and uh, whatever related to performance uh, you can ask. So first we will be going through about 10 to 15 minutes about the book. Then we can take up a couple of questions and then we can uh, uh, talk more about the book and then we can take a couple of questions. So this is the form, uh, form of this meeting. And of course you can ask anything uh, related to performance uh, to Leandro and myself. And uh, I hope this discussion will be very useful. And also uh, I am running a giveaway. So Leandro uh, generously giving away two eBooks so if you go to clubhouse.qainsights.com slash 14, you can participate in the giveaway. And uh, at the end of the next week, I will announce the winner and the winner will be getting the uh, e-copy uh, of the book. So this is one announcement. And I have another announcement uh, regarding a load test world conference from Redline 13. So next month, uh, we have a conference coming up conducted by Redline 13. Uh, Leander also speaking in the conference and uh, I also will be speaking about the JMeter and a uh, lot of other leaders in the industry. They are uh, talking about various uh, topics. So please check it out, uh, loadtestworld.com. So with that said, uh, let us uh, start with Leandro. Hi, Leandro. How are you? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, enjoying the weekend and super happy to be here and having a chance to share with you all what has been uh, all this experience around the book and uh, everything around the content. It's yeah, thank, a pleasure thank to be you, here. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing uh, to be part of Clubhouse. I think this is your first Clubhouse meeting, correct, Leandro? Um, I have to say I'm fairly new to the platform. Uh, I have been on some okay. other Spanish-speaking um, presentations or how to call this, Clubhouses? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, around uh, performance, but uh, yeah, I'm fairly new around here. It's it's okay. cool, cool. Thank you. So uh, anyway, uh, this first question, right from my side, uh, you would have faced in many other interviews also. So my question is, why this book? So why at this point? Uh, what is the uh, reason uh, to release this book? Well, um, yeah, it's it's a loaded question uh, for me a little bit because. Mm, it, this book, for the ones that do not know, I started writing it around eight years ago. And uh, the reason for it is that, uh, at, as you know, I'm a consultant. I go to many different projects with different customers. And to most of them, I had to explain some of the performance testing topics all uh, together, developers, testers, seasoned performance engineers, and CEOs, even people that could get bored with our technical jargon being used in um, performance testing. So I started to come up with um, interesting ways, analogies, and fun examples to get people engaged and mostly to help them understand. But after several projects, I would have uh, a project every other month uh, explaining the same things using similar examples. I started to think, hey, why don't I put this into a format that is easier to share with the world, to share with everybody, and to help all together seasoned performance uh, engineers, beginners, people wanting to learn, even managers that may not have much of an idea how well some of these technical terms uh, work. 
So that was the reason for the book. I wanted to have a format to share the knowledge, share the understanding, and to help the people to have a good time while learning it because um, technical things, technical topics like performance testing can be can be boring and difficult. So my main mission was to make it entertaining and fun to read. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really nice. So what is the inspiration uh, for this book? So any inspiration from other books you have rendered from it? Well, at, at the beginning, everything started to uh, uh, by trying to explain things in ways that were fun. Uh, for the ones here that may not be too familiar, I would recommend uh, checking. Uh, this is a, a TV series that uh, was broadcasting, as I said, like uh, eight or so years ago. Uh, the Dog Whisperer with Cesar Milan, a person that was explaining their owners that he would come into um, dog owners' uh, houses and help them with problems with the puppies. And he would give some analogies like your dog is under stress, he's kind of nervous, he needs some guidance, he thinks he owns you. And some of the ways that he started to explain things, I was like, that, that's applicable to performance. And I even started to use... Um, dog whispering as a way to explain how do we do with uh, testing scripts. You, the testing script is like a dog. You're trying to train it. You have to walk the same path with the dog several times, teach him. They don't see in color, they smell. So you have to teach uh, the front end is different. We people see the front end, but they see the back end. And some of those things was the initial inspiration. And then I, uh, as you can see in the title, I'm a fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, uh, the book series. And that was another inspiration. Why don't I make it like a, like a story, like something that flows, that um, you can go from the beginning to the end and have a good journey, uh, of course, carrying around your towel, your test plan, I would say, is the equivalent here. For the ones that um, have not read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, it's very important to carry a towel when you're traveling the universe. And here as well, it's important to carry your test plan. It's one of the things that I describe the longest in the book, but it's important to have it on, on, on a low test. And at last, and this came really at the very last days uh, that I was uh, giving the final touches. Um, I was reading the Phoenix Project, the Unicorn Project, and the DevOps guide from Jim Kim. And some, some of those uh, insights gave me the idea uh, of trying to make it more like a story. But uh, stepping ahead a little bit, I want to mimic uh, on a future book the story of a performance engineer joining a company that does poor performance and then goes to another one that they have best practices, modern practices they follow how things should be in a Phoenix project way. So by the end, I tried to apply something uh, uh, from those books on uh, the hitchhiking guide to load testing projects, but <clears throat> there's more to come. Uh, there are many topics that need to be covered around performance testing. And as I said, this book, um, the inspiration as well comes from uh, the PMP, Mercury's guides on load testing projects where I said, I can put all these best practices and steps for traditional load testing projects into a format that is fun, that you can read and you can uh, travel through it in, in, in a way that is like a journey or a, or a video game. And that's something that I also emphasize in the book, that you move on through levels, uh, gain skills, gain weapons, gain things that uh, you need to move on in the video game. That's another inspiration for the book, uh, I would say, plainly, <laughs> video games. Okay, got it. So there are multiple things uh, it contributed uh, to write this uh, idea, right, for the book. Uh, could you say again? Uh, there are multiple things you took inspiration, right, not just games and uh, oh. a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a big amalgamation of ideas, techniques, uh, stories, and... Uh, I would. I, I hope it's a crazy ride to read the book. <laughs> correct, correct. Actually, uh, when I purchased the, the book, uh, I I had a Phoenix project and Unicorn project in my mind. 
because i have the expectation okay the story will lo- go with like a like a protagonist he is a performance engineer and there are surrounded by manager ceo cfos i thought uh, that mindset before right then uh, after reading the first chapter then okay this is not a uh, phoenix like it is a different uh, uh, approach then i started reading uh, the subsequent chapters it's it's a a journey definitely right. because you right. have to travel through the chapters through but uh yeah as you mentioned it's not like the phoenix break it's not a single character journey which i have the idea and i'm working on uh that story already but it's uh mostly um uh, it's a fun, fun walk through guide for the ones that are familiar with video games Uh, you used to get a walkthrough. Uh, level one, you need to visit the um, wizard and get the sword, then get the arena, then you need to go to level two, and so on. So that's what I wanted to have uh, for whoever reads the book, uh, like a guide, and say, hey, I'm on phase three of the project. What do I have to do? Okay, let's go back and check the book. What is the next step? Okay, that's that. I have to complete the um, automations. I have to do the... 10 steps for the best practices, this, this, and that, and have the scenarios, I'm ready to move to the level four. So it's it's intended more to be like a guide rather than a story, but uh, beware, there's a story one come. Got it, got it. And also, I would like to talk about the book cover, Leandro. Actually, I was not able to understand the concept of the book cover. I'm not sure. I don't know who designed that. I think your friend, right? Your friend or cousin, I don't know. Forgot. So there is a guy standing and there are three buildings and there is a volcano and there's a sunset. So what is the message from the book cover? Uh... So, um, yeah, it was designed, um, a friend of mine in Mexico City is um, an awarded designer. So it's a good cover and um, it gets uh, my attention. I'm glad that you noticed that uh, the cover um, comes from a very special source. I mean, it was designed by um, Marco Piron, a mm-hmm. renowned designer in Mexico. And um, it's about the journey. As I mentioned, is uh, the challenges that you will face. There are different steps, as you can see. There's a volcano. There are servers at the bottom um, throwing beams of light into the sky. Um, you can see all the horizon, all the long journey that you have to do until you get to the last step of this mm-hmm. More thinking it as a video game because the character that you see, um, my friend getting this inspiration has, if you can see on a border of the face of the character has a little mustache. So I think he was thinking of me and I, I told him it's, it's an adventure. It's a, as I said, like a video game. You have to go on like in Lord of the Rings. You will start with, um, ring fellowship with your friends. You go through a journey and you will end up in Mordor destroying the ring and um, doing all the steps that you have to uh, achieve in between. And the book cover somewhat tries to resemble that, tries to show you that there are many steps. As you can see in the cover, there are scenarios, um, the different areas. And even inside of the book, you see the volcano, you see some of those being represented of what is on what is the journey. Uh, there's a kid's drawing as well, not by a professional designer, but by myself. I did um, the drawings and silly graphics that you will see inside of the book. But um, that's that's a reference uh, telling you that being a performance and especially a load testing engineer, doing a load testing project is a journey. Is um, There are many challenges. There are many uh, mini adventures that you have to pass through. And you need to go up that hill and look at the whole steps of the project and understand the all all, all the adventure that awaits um, in front of you, and that you have to uh, be able to pass through. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Leandro. So we have Renal joined. Uh, hi, Renal. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we can take a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. So that I can admit to the stage. And uh, just a quick note: this session is being recorded. It will be available once the session is done. Hi, Nanan. Hey, Navin. Hi, Leandro. Hi. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to know if this is also, uh, I mean, the book, um, you know, is like a head-first guide to performance testing. Is have you designed it like that uh, for easy 
digestion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, that's also why I put it with uh, silly examples. I think most mm-hmm. of us uh, computer engineers, we are somewhat geeks and nerds and we like uh, pop culture. So I try to pack it with uh, references to video games, to video series, uh, movies, and common folklore, uh, pop culture in general. I couldn't avoid putting a little bit of my Mexican heritage. There are chanclas and tacos and things like that being mentioned here and there. But it's to make it easy for the ones that are trying to start um, not only performance testing, because this one goes specifically on load testing, which um, for the ones who know me know that I am at war for the um, um, confusing performance and load testing. Uh, those topics are not the same thing. And the book helps you because I, I think the most common uh, job that people will get in performance testing is a load testing project. So that's why I think these uh, steps that the book explains in an easy way will help you to understand and start working on load testing projects uh, or working around performance easy. I hope with that I answered the question. Just let me know if you have any other <laughs> clarification. Hi, Nyanendra. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions, yeah, you can hi, ask me, Andrew. Yeah, Anavin, am I audible? Uh, yes. Yeah, hi, Leandro. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Like uh, I just started my career uh, in uh, performance testing. Like it's it's like, uh, so uh, three years I'm into performance testing. So uh, since Navin, you are already read the book and Leandro, you are author of the book, like you have, you have been in this performance testing for the past 20 years. So uh, can I get the concept easily? Like, uh, is it is it recommendable uh, to a, a beginner? How can I, uh, I mean, can I understand the concepts and all those? Um, thanks, Anandra, for for uh, your question. And yeah, it's the book is uh, intended for you to understand the main concepts in performance and low testing projects. I don't go over uh, specifics around tools. I want this book to help you to understand the concepts, what is at the bottom of uh, every tool, every pa- practice, every process around performance. So that uh, once you start on the project, um, if you read the book, you understand what is required from you. But once you're in the project, you can go back to the book and see what did I have to do here? Okay, this, this, and that. And you will be having an easier time understanding almost every load testing tool that is needed around the project rather than becoming a tool specialist. Because that's another project problem that I see. People learn the tool. But uh, let's say they learned Load Runner, and I ask them, hey, now this project is on JMeter, it's on Neoload, it's on Gatling, or we, we will just be doing manual load testing, which is possible. And they get confused because they don't understand the concepts that are beneath at the bottom and in the, in the foundations of performance and load testing. So the book will help you to understand those and hopefully will give you weapons to understand all the tools uh, that are needed around performance and load testing. So hopefully um, it will give you uh, good guidance on them. Thanks, thanks, Leandro. And I am a frequent, uh, I mean, like uh, reader of your blog, sopf.com. So it's very, uh, like, uh, very insightful. Uh, so it's it's very entertaining, actually. <laughs> uh, I also used to follow Navin Navin's uh, QAinsights.com. Whenever I get time, I used to dive into these two websites. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for your like. Thank work. you, thank you, Navin. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And one more thing, uh, Navin, I would like to uh, Leandro also. So, uh, so how uh, performance would be like uh, in the coming next to 10 years? Like if I want to develop a career, like uh, I'm working as a performance tester, how I can uh, develop a career path? So uh, uh, I did some research. Based on research, I found like, so first we can learn a performance tool. Then we can learn an app monitoring tool. Uh, then we we can uh, look, I mean, uh, learn on uh, uh, Azure side, like uh, infrastructure infrastructure side like uh, so uh that, that is what i got like i'm a bit confused uh, can you please guide me here how can i develop a career path in performance testing like uh, so if i want to uh, be in this uh, 
so platform for the next 20 years like so uh, what are the essentials like uh, how i can develop a career path in this uh, d- domain uh, can you please uh, help me i mean give some information on sure that? um so the the question is a little outside of uh, the topic of the book but i can give you a quick uh, answer yes. uh, or guidelines on what to do um in general things are moving right now to continuous to agile i would recommend you highly to understand uh, some of those implementations rather than going around tools that's um uh, don't focus so much on tools or what you need but try to understand the concepts around that and how performance impacts and what are the difference and that's that's something that i want Uh, to help everybody to get clearer understanding not everything in performance testing is around tools or low tests automations you can do very good performance testing without using a single tool just manually uh just using your browser or many others so i would recommend you uh get on the newest trends understand them and how they interact with performance don't get your mind around tools only okay Uh, thanks thank you leandro thanks for the information yeah thanks leandro thank you very much yeah so leandro i have another question uh, for you <laughs> uh, so what did you learn while writing this book leandro instead of anyway you have uh, taught us the various concepts in a simple uh, uh, by, say, by explaining a simple analogy so what did you learn throughout this book writing journey oh wow uh, the learnings were several uh, i would say first of all writing um it's not an easy task not everyone can do it easily um it's very different how you think things in your head how you speak them and how they should be written um you need to learn things like to not to use passive voice several times to respect verbs to not to have long sentences to i mean basic um i would say literature or writing principles uh that's that's one that i had why i took it took me so long cuz i wanted to write it well and mostly in a way that would flow that it would be easy for you because some other books that uh are poorly written um and probably many of you listening have had this experience where you're reading a book and you're like i don't i didn't understand i have to go back and reread this thing and that that was a big learning for me because i wanted it to be an easy read and uh that was on the writing side and it took me easily one or two years to start to learn it with the blog uh that uh, gladly it was referenced earlier today i started to learn a little bit um wordpress comes with uh some tools that help you uh putting your ideas together and tells you hey here you're repeating words here the paragraph is too long you have too many letters so learnings around literature were vast and many and on the other hand uh the editorial world were uh that's also an interesting path where you need to have reviews uh editions you have no idea this book has been was written at least four times read written completely so that it would have uh, make sense have a good structure have a uh, good content around the content i had to uh, learn what topics would be critical for the performance engineers reading it and which others were uh, interesting to me but probably not critical for a a, uh, a a career path they are maybe you can find them on my blog there are some other uh details but not um so critical and i had to learn uh, ah sorry and in in the end of all, was, sorry arun um please uh, keep your microphone muted <laughs> yeah um so and in the end also there was a tough decision because I almost did not publish it um because the book deals with load testing projects in a traditional manner not around agile not around modern technologies not around um continuous and I started it out is this still relevant uh should I still publish it and I had to do some scouting and research where I learned 
from multiple sources, they were like, oh yeah, we're still doing projects that way in a traditional, even if the team say it's waterfall, we are continuous. We know that most of them are not. And um, we have to do these projects in a traditional manner. It's something that most load testing projects cannot be done in an agile way. If uh, you did many steps that eventually, as you very well hinted uh, elsewhere, I will uh, write a book around agile performance testing, but it's very different. And it's important that every performance engineer knows how to do a traditional load testing project, knows the basis, because uh, the basics uh, displayed and explained in the book are the foundations, as I said, for any performance engineer. If you're trying to ride a motorcycle because it's modern, it's more powerful, it's um, ahead, but you don't know how to ride a bicycle or worse, a tricycle, you will have a hard time. You may maybe will have an accident and won't be doing the best you could. So it is, it is recommended to understand these principles. And I learned that uh, I, I was starting to uh, despise it. And I was like, no, this is important. And I learned um, through a hard way. And last, I would say, another learning is the latex language. It's like a programming language. It's like the grandfather of HTML. And it's used for book uh, publishing because Perfites, um, the Perfite family, my friends, um, they are, they helped me. They, uh, we created Perfite Express. We can, and I'm going to put a, Small ad here. <laughs> if anyone is interested, um, contact James Pooley in writing a book. He will help you and we can publish it through Perfect Express. But we had to learn uh, this language to make uh, books in a correct order so that they have a heading, the content, the pictures, that the page and everything around it. So there were multiple learnings for me in this book publishing adventure. Um, not only around the project, it feels to me like, as you mentioned in the cover, it's me that was going through those volcanoes and servers and uh, landscapes trying to conquer this book, book publishing. Uh, correct, correct, yeah. So this is uh, the first book from Perfbytes uh, Publications, correct, Leandro? That is right. Uh, the first, uh, but not the only. And we have uh, one more coming from James Pooley on performance interviews. Uh, job interviews, and a third one around um, security, SecOps, I believe. Uh, I can't remember who's the author of the next one, but um, yeah, uh, already two more coming, and if any of you are interested. Uh... Sure, yeah. So uh, so how did you submit the pitch to Perfite's uh, team? So who approved this? Any comments you got it? Can you submit the abstract? So look for James Pooley on any on the socials. You can find him. He is the head of Pervite Express. And um, get in touch with him. Send him a note, an email, and um, let him know that you are interested. Pitch the um, topic, the title, what you want to talk about. And um, you being good. So uh, when you when you submit for this book, right, uh, the pitch or abstract, uh, any comments you received, anything specific, you changed it after that? Yeah, uh, as I said, um, before I was ready to start sending it to editorials and publishing houses, I got recommended by Mike Lyles, another um, QA guru and presenter who already uh, published a book recently. And um, he told me, you need to have an, uh, someone to help you and check the book for, even as much as I said, I think I learned about uh, writing. I'm not a professional on writing. So I got help from uh, an editor, um, Joanna, who helped us in um, getting it uh, finally to uh, something that was more readable. And after I contacted um, uh, James and I started talking and he said, hey, it would be a good idea to get the book to start this editorial house for performance testing um, books. Uh, what do you think if we give it another uh, review uh, with another editor? And so that was it, a second review, checking for inconsistencies, uh, poorly written. English is not my native language, so 
it had to be uh, rewritten again. And that was the main requirement. Then um, figuring out what was going to be the cover. As I said, I am lucky enough to have a uh, desi uh, famous designer friend. I got the cover. Uh, we designed it, the standard for the books. And uh, those, I would say, were the requirements. But and, and, and the goal, if you have a topic that is very punctual, uh, 80, 100 pages, mine is longer because I want it to be an epic adventure. But um, for, for submitting, you can get in touch with James and he will give you feedback on what has to be done, what type of reviews, and he would recommend you who to contact to get it polished. I think that's the biggest um, like, like rework that you have to do once you contact and uh, making sure that is good for publishing and you'll be. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Leandro. Uh, we have Arun who joined. Hi, Arun. Thanks for joining. Hey, Naveen. Thank you. Yeah, you can. Uh, 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 sorry, we are getting a lot of data. Uh, 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 Naveen, let me complete it quickly. I just want to know whether we have audio version of this book. Oh, thank you for the question, Arun. No, there's no audio version yet, but you're not the first to ask this. Uh, so I believe um, I should better get working on that and get an audio version around it. As I, uh, it's interesting because the fun parts of the book, half of the book, are the examples, the introductions, all the indications. Uh, that's going to be a very fun part to describe and read. The other half, the boring part, the boring mumbo jumbo, as I call it, is um, going to be, I don't know how adaptable will it be to an audio version, but I will try to make it as fun as possible. But yeah, I am already looking into how to give you uh, all this version, as well as into trying to translate it into other languages. Let's see. Uh, how that goes and if we can pull it off, but the easiest will be the audio version. Yeah, thank you, Leandro. That really is. Uh, those who joined new, uh, please raise your hand so that I can admit to the stage. So, Leandro, since you mentioned that uh, mumbo jumbo, right? So, who coined this term? Is it you or uh, somebody else? <laughs> I think it's a, a, a slang in the U.S. Uh, mumbo jumbo is like those uh, weird words that are used in in general. Re refer to uh, weird words that are not you are not familiar with or that people use around. I have uh, I got the term from many movies that I've seen uh, and see it referenced that it's like the slang of a trade. And since we in performance testing and IT have lots of terms that to regular people may sound foreign, alien, weird, different, I was like, let's use a term for that. It's it's the it's the official and boring mumbo jumbo. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an official yeah, term. It was new to me. Yeah, I, I was I was not aware of the term, so it was new. My kid also was asking, "What is mumbo jumbo? Is it some kid's book?" He was he was asking. <laughs> I don't know. It is a technical <laughs> book. <laughs> I'm glad that you not only learned performance but uh, new weird uh, English term. Correct, correct, yes. And when you write this official mumbo jumbo section, right? I mean, uh, basically, it is easy to write that section, but analogies are were very tough to write. Correct. So there are a lot of analogies you took. You I mean you took almost every analogy in all the fields. So uh, how did you uh, come up with the analogy for the particular concept to explain? So do you, we, you revise multiple times or you just uh, fix one thing and then you just uh, improve that part? So um, the difference in the mumbo jumbo and analogies, and I forgot to mention this on a past question, another inspiration that I got for this book, if you have read it, is uh, the never ending story from Mikhail or Michael Ende, um, which if any of you have seen it, is about the land of Fantasia and Balthasar, Bastian Dox, who traveled to this mystical world. And when you're in the real world, this is the first book that I saw doing that. The font is different and the color of the letters is different. And when you are in the fantastic world, the font is different and the color of the letters is different, depending on the print that you get. 
I wanted to do that. And if you noticed, when you are reading the mumbo jumbo, uh, the font is computer like. If uh, I remember well, it's Korean new. It's like what you have on your terminal. And when you are reading the phone examples, it's a different font. So that you even feel that you are in a different place or uh, reading something different. And from your question, there are some examples in the book that I came up with them, as I said, uh, in my consultant's job. Several years before, I had to come up with examples to let to help people understand. So many of them, I already had them in my mind. I just had to put them together and in shape so that they would tell the story around that phase or that topic. But there were others that I was like, how can I explain this in a way that uh, will be entertaining, relatable? Most, most of all, establishing the rapport in between um, the book and the reader so that you would say, yeah, yeah, my mom once sent me to the store and didn't tell me very well what to pick up. And then um, she scolded me because I didn't bring what she wanted, but she didn't tell me, right? And that's what happens with our correlations. So there were a few that um, it took me even months trying to come up with what would be a good example, a good analogy. Where else have I seen in the world this type of uh, things, concepts happening? And there, there were some even like um, the one with the dinosaurs uh, trying to check if we can clone them from told DNA like happened in the movie and understanding if we can do some automations because with automations, not all of them can be done or at times we have to do peculiar things or use different tools. So it, it on some of them, it was really easy because I already had them in my mind. I explained to myself some of those concepts with those examples. But others, um, I had to sit there and think, how could I explain this? And my biggest was, how would I explain this to my grandmother or a toddler, a very young kid that needs to understand this so that they would catch it in a way that they could relate and they would say, oh, I see, it's like picking up groceries. I see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you do, now I understand. And that's, I think, the, the deal. Another inspiration for the book um, is um, uh, surely you're joking, Mr. Uh, Feynman from Richard Feynman. That, that was a famous mathematician, physicist, and uh, Nobel Prize winner who had this king uh, and said, you should be able to explain complicated things to a toddler, to your grandmother, to everyone. And that's that's the key of understanding it, a concept. Um, made me also myself learn a little bit more about perfect. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And uh, when it comes to the uh, levels, right? So which level uh, you felt it's very tough to complete among five levels? Oh, wow. Um, and and I, I do a big um, point on the book about some of these levels traditionally and in many projects, you arrive at them and they ask you, can you start scripting right now, today? Yeah, sure. What is the plan? What is, why, what are, what is the scenario that we're, no, 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 just start scripting and that's what we need to do. 10,000 scripts, 10,000 automations, 100, which at the beginning of my career, um, well, I'm just an employee. I'm just uh, another brick in the wall, as they say. And I have to do my job. So, But I started to wonder, why am I automating this script of a process that happens only once a month? It doesn't make sense. These, these ones are for, it's not for load. Why am I automating this? So I would say at the beginning of my career, I had problems with those first two levels because many in the industry do not pay attention to them, do not do them well, do not, do not have the document at the end. It's just a poorly written email. So in my uh, in the beginnings, the I would say the two first levels were a problem. Mid-career, uh, when uh, for scripting, the... I would say level three, the creation, 
uh, and probably many of you uh, have this experience. When you are automating, you record your script and you press play right away and check where does it break and start fixing from there, which I, I used to commit that mistake for several years in my career until I was like, hey, if I have the recordings for these steps multiple times, I can identify what is changing. In the end, that's what I want to do. So I've been created, um, for the ones that reference my blog, there you can see the 10 steps for bulletproof scripting, where uh, I, I wanted even to patent that um, so that you, you, when you create your scripts, they won't break for problems in the script. Many customers will tell me, hey, isn't it normal that uh, low test scenarios fail here and there? They have like 10% of errors. I was like, no, 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 no. My scenarios, my scripts have zero errors, zero problems. If any problem arises, it's because the system is starting to fail because of the load. And that was important for me to understand that I was doing wrong and come up with a set of best practices that would help you to do scripts in the most efficient way. This is faster, believe it or not, because if you do it the old way, you are lots of time, several hours or even days trying to figure out why the script is breaking. Um, and with the steps that I convey in the book, you have a straightforward um, best practice where most probably they won't ever fail and they won't have that many problems. So I would say, those were the ones. And the last that I had problems in my life, um, the last level, presenting the results. I wanted originally everyone to read my reports that had the throughput and the response times and the HTTP 500 errors. And I started to put that and the executive summary at the end. It took me several years to understand that many executives do not care or understand throughputs, uh, HTTP 500s, uh, correlations. They just want to know the main things. Is the system performing? And where do should I put um, attention to? As a manager, uh, as a, managers do not have to be experts in performance testing to understand that they have to fix something or if the system is okay. So I would say the very last level is another where I had problems and I was doing wrong for several years until I was like, yeah, managers do not care. My final reports generally used to be 30, 40, 50 pages long, explaining everything that happened in the project. But you have to include a first page. This is the main things that we found. No technical terms and explain you will have a problem here, uh, there, here, over there, or your system is doing right. That's that's the most important thing that I can see or I can tell I did wrong or have. Got it. Yeah. So thanks, Leandro. So we can take a couple of questions. Uh, Sid, Rakesh, anybody? If you have any questions, you can ask Leandro. Leandro, uh, yeah. Leandro you uh, work closely with Mark Tomlinson and James Foley, right? Uh, were there any inputs from them in the book? for the book uh there were few but um when i met them i was i met them like three years ago and as i said the book uh, started to be worked on um over eight years ago so the book was already completed when i met them but they were a very good source to touch base and check with them do you think it's still worthy to publish a book about uh, waterfall style load testing projects and they were yeah absolutely that's a problem that we see in the industry we have projects about that every day and of course you should do that so I would say that was the biggest input from them uh, when I met them I was already explaining all those topics and conferences on my blog and elsewhere so uh, they were a very good bouncing board to check on the idea very good fellows, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sam Swanti, for joining. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask Leandro. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, everyone. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, two quick questions. 
So for the first one, and sorry, I kind of joined late. Uh, for the book, is it only available uh, in Kindle? Or is there any other place that we can get it in a different format, digi uh, digital? Uh, no, it's only in the Kindle platform. Supposedly, and this is uh, more around the Amazon's publishing process, it should be available in other bookstores eventually. But uh, we haven't found clear information of how long does it take. So for now, it's only Kindle. But you can get the Kindle app on uh, almost any device that I can think of. So hopefully that uh, makes it easier. But for now, an electronic version, just Kindle. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. And uh, second question, I don't know if your book covers this. So I know as a consultant, you go from uh, projects to projects. And sometimes I'm sure this customers may have unrealistic uh, expectations. So like, how do you, or I guess, based on your approach, like, how do you try to align their targets to like what they have in, let's say, production? Or like, how do you try to get those uh, matrix? Yeah, that's... Um a very common situation that we walk into um, sounds like uh, you being a consultant you're familiar with too and when I get to a customer where when they have non-realistic uh, requirements and I think that's the very first point that I, I attack in the book why do you want to get a performance or load testing project that's the very first question that you need to clear out I make it to the customers and um, Generally, it's from risks. Uh, hey, I'm going to be putting more users in the system. Uh, I'm going to be moving it to the cloud. I'm going to be, uh, it's a new system. I'm going to be launching it. And the worst ones is like, I don't know. It's uh, just a checkbox in my project plan. And I know that I have to do the performance something. So that's why you're here. I want uh, a million users tested, please. And that's where you have to talk to the customer and uh, let them and explain, and, and that's the point of the, book, of the book, use all the examples that you want from there to explain to the customers why do you think it's a crazy requirement. Many times as well, from the companies that I have worked, a consultant company, they are happy because the customer says, I want 50 automations in my low test. I would get at the project and uh, I would say, hey, the Pareto principle and the best use of your money and my a scripting uh, time is that you should not automate all your processes. Are you sure you want? And you explain to them, doesn't make sense. You'll be spending more uh, money, more time. You can ask someone to trigger the other ones manually. When they understand, um, my bosses not always were happy because then the scope goes from 50 to eight. Uh, but it's what should be done, what is correct, what is ethical. And I prefer to do that and explain to the customer. There are other customers that they are so stubborn that they say, no, I want my 50 scripts. I want this nonsense automation. And you come here to provide me that service. Okay. So what I recommend in those situations, put on writing why you think is not the best approach. Send it on an email. And in the end, the customer's always right. You have to provide what they are requesting. But you did your due diligence. You explained to them why it's not a meaningful test or why, why they won't get the benefit that they are thinking. And the book goes over this uh, extensively, I would say. It's very, very important. And it's a headache that as consultants. All right. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And looking forward to grabbing a, uh, a copy of this book. Uh, I guess uh, lastly, too. Uh, from the sound of it, I guess you didn't really go into too many uh, technicalities, but having uh, having like been in the industry for so long and uh, working on various projects, like nowadays, I guess, what's your preferred uh, tool of choice for, let's say, uh, scripting? <clears throat> well, um, yes, the book doesn't get into specifics and technicalities, but they try to explain the essence of them. So you will understand what is a correlation, what is uh, throughput, what is uh, pacing, what is the load, all the ter terms that you need on all the tools. And to your answer, <clears throat> what is my favorite tool to use on a project? All and none. To exemplify, I will ask you this question. 
what is your favorite tool for eating? I'm guessing you will say it depends what am I eating. And it's the same in low testing projects. It depends on what are you testing? What is the technology? Even what are the developers creating it on? And uh, what is the goal of the, the project? Because not all tools work for the same. If I tell you here, yeah, my favorite tool is the spoon, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat chicken with a spoon. Probably it's not the best. If I tell you, okay, okay, my favorite tool is a fork. Well, I need to eat soup. What can I do? And it's the same on load testing projects. Uh, there's no silver bullet, no tool to rule them all. Uh, depending on what is the situation is a tool that you need to choose. Uh, so I don't get attached to any of them. Uh, whichever is the best choice. Yeah, best tool is always a tricky question, right, Leandro? Whenever someone asks. Yeah, we, we get that often and, and it's, it's important. And that's why I want everyone to understand the concepts behind the tool so that you can drive them all. I mean, if I teach you how a car operates, if you have to push the gas pedal, if you have to push the brake pedal, uh, if uh, you have to turn on the lights in these situations, then you will be comfortable with an old Volkswagen, with a big truck, even with a motorcycle at, at times, but you understand the basic concepts. You don't feel that difference when you jump from Google Docs to Microsoft Word because you know the concepts at the bottom that you need to do. So uh, beware with uh, one tool. Correct. Yeah, there is no best tool in the world. It is about what is your requirement? What do you need? Exactly. So based on that, you can uh, select the tool. I mean, if you want to commute, you can go by walk, you can go by cycle, you can go in Tesla. <laughs> How you want to commute? <laughs> this is just on your requirement. The same analogy I use for my uh, training program. Whenever someone asks this, this is the one I explain. So they're based on your requirement. All right. Thank you very much. And yeah, thank you, uh, Leandro, for taking the time to share uh, share your insights uh, in this book. And thank you, Naveen, for providing this uh, platform. So much, much appreciated. Thanks. Everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, hi, Shravanti. You can go or not now. Yeah. Thanks, Naveen. Yeah. Uh, hi, Leandro. So firstly, congratulations on your book release. Definitely, I... I can, I mean, even if sometimes I feel like, okay, Naveen is a professional blogger and content creator, but usually to put everything in writing a book is not an easy task. Definitely a great, big accomplishment for you. So congratulations firstly. So my question is, um, probably I've not gone through Naveen's review post, but what is the biggest takeaway for someone or who is like, uh, 10 plus 15 years, what is the biggest takeaway from this book? Uh, um, uh, Sravanti, thank you for the question. Do you mean for someone experienced? Yeah, right. So my, my hope, and uh, on one hand, I have met many people with several years of experience under their belt that are still doing projects on some details the wrong way or an old way or backwards. Uh, I have met many uh, scripters that would go after 10 years of experience, still just recording, replaying, and fixing what it breaks. And, it, and, and not to say everyone, I, I know the absolute best practice for everything, but I try to give these guidelines right. to, to the people that may be committing these mistakes. And I would say the cherry on the top, Many seasoned performance engineers do not know how to explain these topics to management, to their coworkers, or to convey the message why it is important or what is it that they are doing just in, among your family. Many family members, yeah, yeah, I do that. Oh, weird computer thing. Okay, never mind. So I think that that would be the benefit for seasoned um, performance and load testing engineers. You will make sure that you are doing many things in the best possible way. If you know any others, and I am open for corrections, if you know that I, something that I said does, doesn't make sense, please make it, let me know. Uh, I am always open to polishing myself, but I want to help uh, people polish their practices and to give them examples how to explain. Sure, Leandro. Thank you. Thanks for that. And um, 
do you have any other i mean extension to this big book further on any latest trends or i know you said like there is not much of tool concept you are bringing into this book but um, i mean is there any extension of the next part of it as well or so uh, yeah to give you some trailer into this upcoming uh, movie or book i'm working next on one around agile performance continuous performance all these new trends on performance they will be far from tools i don't want to focus on teaching you uh, one tool um, i want to teach you how to use all the tools to understand them so i'm working on one hand um silly topic that i'm thinking it's a per phoenix corn project very similar to the uh, unicorn and phoenix projects where i will tell a story around how to do it traditional old performance poorly done into uh, a journey to a great project a great culture in a company and all and so on and the next one uh, um, will be i'm thinking of a trilogy for uh, these books the second one will be on agile and continuous performance and the third one will be more around observability to knowing at all times the performance of your solution uh a little ambitious i hope uh, the next ones do not take me <laughs> eight years again um now i i know better i've learned lots of things so hopefully these ones uh will take a uh, shorter time so some to surely andrew thank you thanks for those Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Leandro. Uh, we have uh, Venget, uh, Rakesh. Do you have any questions to the author? Yeah. Can I speak? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure, Venget. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So uh, my question is um, just um, wanted to have some more details about continuous performance. Just wanted to learn more about it. Okay. Um, the book. This book, the Hitchhiking Guide to Lotus and Projects, will not help you much. But if you want some more information, I could um, tell you. Uh, follow me on YouTube. Uh, I have the Senor Performo ENG for English. Uh, there, are, I'm starting to explain continuous performance, some topics around it, and um, on the English Perfights podcasts. Mark and James, they talk a lot around it. Uh, Henrik Rex and I. are starting to talk around performance topics and um wait a little well wait a little i hope it's not too long for uh, agile and continuous performance book <laughs> okay so any tentative date uh, leandro for the release next year or will take a couple of years i really don't know i'm starting with um just the outlines of the content that i want to have on the book but um i really don't know there are multiple uh, side projects you know the youtube channel the podcast the blogs conferences and we have here in mexico we call it chasing the pork chop we have to work for food so i have office hours as well so let's see um how things go i really want to push this way faster than the first book but can't promise uh, dates yet sadly got it yeah Yeah, thanks, Leandro. Uh, hi, Sid. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask Rakesh. If you have any questions, again, now uh, ask the author. Hi, Sid. Thanks for joining. Hey, hey Navin. Hey, Leandro. Hey, uh, congratulations, Leandro. So, I just ordered your book, but after uh, I don't buy a book unless until if I know what is there in the content. so by listening this podcast i just ordered online and uh, <clears throat> and this question for you to navin so is there any book you are planning to publish um well if i um well first of all thank you very much for the congratulations and for buying the book i really hope you enjoy it i look forward to any review i'm very happy to see if it helps you and if you have Uh, any comments around it that should be fixed in a second edition or something like that i'm very happy to and as i mentioned yeah i have uh, three ideas in the works let's see uh, how those start to go um yeah. 
for yeah the question the question was to lian uh, lian sorry to interrupt but the question was to navin so i was asking navin are you planning any books to publish like leandro myself <laughs> myself okay no i don't know i don't have any plans i already published three books in the past but it didn't well uh, it didn't uh, go through because my marketing uh, sucks <laughs> so i stopped writing books then i started creating youtube and uh, blog and let's and, fix that <laughs> we can uh, perfect express let's try to do that yeah Yeah. yeah probably if i get some idea i definitely leandro i will uh, pitch it to press bytes awesome and uh, leandro the question to you is like uh, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> about scripting you have mentioned so like you have any particular blog or youtube channel i have both if you uh, google senor performo uh, you will find my blog it's www.srperf seniorperf.com mm-hmm. and uh, yeah on that blog i describe um the 10 steps for bulletproof scripting uh i did a couple of presentations and in conferences about that only i cannot remember if those were in spanish or in english but in the blog you will get a very good idea and the book explains it as well oh uh, sorry can i repeat that link uh yeah it's www.sr uh senior s r p e r f perf dot com senior perf dot and uh, uh leonardo what are the other books like uh, you mentioned from james pulley from next con- upcoming books and where can we track those information um the next book is um uh, how to manage perform uh, job interviews if i remember well i might be um mispronouncing the title but um that's more or less around how to pull performance job interviews and the next one is around security i as i said uh, this was announced just a few days ago that they were in the works um check uh perfights and james pulley on linkedin i believe he has mentioned uh, those books coming up soon i don't know the dates um again it's a uh, tough work to push a book in the right way so um, but i i think uh, the interview one should be coming really soon i think james has almost it thanks thanks yeah uh okay hi eldad hi eldad thanks for joining Hey, hello everyone. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So, uh, so shout out to everybody. Thank you for arranging this talk. Great talk by uh, Leandro. Um, I just want to lay out a few assumptions and then get to a question. So, uh, when I imagine a product team, okay, so a team that leads to a software product. So you have a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, developers or professionals. And they all know pretty much all of the topics involved to a superficial level. So everybody knows what a database is, and everybody knows what a backend and a frontend is, and they know what Kubernetes is and all those big words to a superficial level. <clears throat> Excuse me. To a superficial level. And they, want, they have this single, <clears throat> single area of expertise. So, for example, the... Uh, low testing so you have one low testing professional who is who knows it f- fairly well or deeply well and you have one professional who knows um uh software testing in general very well so what you get is this kind of t-shaped uh skill sets where every everyone knows everything to superficial level except this one area of expertise that they are very good at So what I'm getting is, is in my question is um do, do you think that um a, a book like yours that is very engaging in, in its way uh can help to communicate the virtues and the challenges or the I would call the, the different aspects of performance testing to non-performance testing 
personnel, so to the backend developers and the DBAs and all the other, I, I, would, I would like to call them uh, performance testing stakeholders. Okay, they're not the actual professional um, site reliability engineers or performance engineers, uh, but they are stakeholders of that and they want to understand better uh, the disciplines involved. Do you think that this could uh, assist them understanding that? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for your question on that. Um, could you mute yourself? I think the audio is looking a little bit. Okay. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Even a wish uh, I have or a, a goal for this book is that not only performance engineers read it, I would love managers, CEOs, I mean, wishful thinking, right? But I would hope that many people would read it and understand the traits, um, the, the practices, why it is important. From the examples, that's why the, the, my effort was to try to make it as fun and relatable as possible so that anyone would be able to read it. And even uh, further, people that um, are slightly related to a IT project, uh, a product, will get more understanding from reading the book. We'll say, ah, that's why... The performance engineer was asking me these weird questions, why he wanted to do this, why he wanted to do that. So, yeah, I, I do believe and hope that this book will help almost anyone. Uh, even the people that helped me editing the book, reading it, people that were literature professionals, both of them told me, now I know about your trade at a point that I never thought I would understand. Now I know why Netflix has so many people hitting um, the servers and what problems can come from that. And I was like, wow, I helped you, a uh, literature and philosophy person, understand performance testing. I'm, I'm so happy about it. I, I hired you to read it, but I'm happy that you got most of the concepts. So I think, yeah, most of the people will get. Awesome. Because I think this is the, uh, the biggest challenge. Um, uh, when people think about functional tests, they know about the robotic part, the uh, specific uh, repetitive part of, um, of functional tests. And they know that there is a small portion of exploratory part that humans typically do. Low testing, on the other hand, is almost entirely exploratory. It's almost entirely um, an attempt to explore the boundaries of your product and crash it at some point. Uh, so it, it's a lot more difficult. It's subjected to a lot, a much greater degree of uh, uncertainty. And the uh, you, you call it uh, investigating the crime scene. Um, I sometimes in, at, at my work, I refer to this as the post-mortem uh, analysis. Uh, but it's kind of the same concept that you try to uh, relate cause and effect in, in an extremely complex environment and you start trying to make all to connect all the dots and put all the pieces of the puzzle but it's very extremely difficult yeah in the end it's an autopsy of uh crime scene that uh it's a postmortem yeah we're we're but um tomato tomato uh, same thing and yeah don't don't even let me get started on QA in general, there are so many other topics where I think people would get a benefit of understanding best practices, alignments, and why things are important, and why so many organizations I see doing it wrong. But um, and and performance testing, as you say, and load testing is taken as more or less as an exploratory uh, practice. But I would say that would not be the approach or the end goal. Performance testing. You need, to, you need to understand it and control it from day one. This is just for load testing projects, for when you have to slam a system that you need to figure out what is going to happen. But, and soon to come in the next book, uh, agile and continuous load testing should become more predictable. But on these ones, as you say, it's a surprise. Uh, you are thrown into a project, you don't know, you have no idea what is going to happen. Okay, let's start punching it a little bit and see how it reacts. But it's that's a good. Cool, thank you.
So any chance for observability, Leandro, in the upcoming book? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the third one in the series. Uh, okay. Observability, uh, performance management, and um, instrumentation, automation, pipelining, all those uh, fun topics that it's, it's a thin line. It will be difficult to divide book two and three because they intersect so much. But observability performance management and i don't want to use the term self healing cuz i don't believe so much on it but i would say self redirecting uh is going to be the third book but i believe most of the people should have the principles of book 1 and 2 to understand observability better why it matters why they should pay attention and why some of the best practices around it uh are indicated that way and why does it matter because observability is another area of um QA or uh, resilience that I feel is widely misunderstood. Sorry, planning to turn into a full time author because there are a lot of topics to cover, right? I need you need <laughs> full time focus on these, right? Correct. So many performance Hi, Sudha Sudhagar. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, hi, Navin. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, Leandro. Okay, okay. I can uh, I can ask any question, right? Or, uh, Anything about this? performance. <laughs> okay. Actually, the performance on the book. <laughs> okay, only book. Okay. So if we, okay, general question, if you want to improve our knowledge in performance engineering wise, so like if you want to analyze any root causes, so if you want to improve on those areas, any suggestions or any books to read? In the... I don't, uh, I, I give a brief explanation on how to do some uh, root cause, some analysis, the postmortems, as that mentioned. But um, I don't know that many books that go specifically around that. Uh, I I always recommend um, Ian Molyneux. Molyneux? No, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, uh, uh, his book, if I remember well, the Practical performance. The art, of the, the art of application performance. That is the, the art of application performance testing. He gives a very big um, explanation on so many topics. Uh, um, I love his book. He managed to put together very different and varied um, topics around um, performance and cyber reliability. I highly recommend that book. I, I admire. Uh, his capability to put together. And I, I remember he has a good um, chapter or a module around analysis. But if I can tell you many times to become a good analyst on these sources of problems and bottlenecks, sadly experience, it's, it's very difficult to, because it can be everything or anything. Um, there's no, no, no single source. So, um, just keep doing it and read as many books as you can around performance and system engineering. That would. Okay, yeah, I have thanks. another uh, recommendation. Uh, it's the book called Systems Performance by Brendan Gregg. Oh, yeah. So that is also, you can check it out. Uh, it is very uh, yeah expensive. Plus, yeah, it has a lot of pages. Uh, it, it is very tough to read. I am on, I think, chapter two. It's been three months I'm reading. So it is never ending. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can can never have all the knowledge around performance. It's a huge area. And if I can say that was a huge challenge for me to decide what to put in the book. That's correct, Leandro. Thank you, both. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Otherwise, we can wind up the session. Uh, thanks, uh, Leandro, uh, for the giveaway and for the knowledge you have shared. And uh, thanks for allocating one hour of our time on Saturday. Uh, you in a very short time, right? I just pinged on last Tuesday, I guess, <laughs> and then you agreed, and everything turned up pretty quickly. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, so there are two things. One is uh, we, we have a Load Test World conference is coming up. So on October 6, please go to loadtestworld.com and you can register. It's a free and virtual event. So the Android will be there, and Eldad will be speaking uh, on some, some topic. 
and uh, there are other other industry leaders uh, who will be taking part in this event so please register and uh, we have a giveaway uh, if you go to clubhouse.qinsights.com/14 the number 14 you can enter into the giveaway and there will be two uh, copies will be uh, given to uh, whoever the winner is next week so that's it guys uh, thanks for joining have a great weekend thanks leandro thank you everybody have thank a great you. weekend so yeah Thank you everyone bye see you bye